No, I'm going to I'm going to say the same thing I've been saying all along. We're not I'm not nitpicking Kemba. Let's not lose our minds here. He's still a lesser a slightly lesser version of what we saw last year at his best. Right He's now. scoring 20 points every game. Uh, what I'm saying is again at his best, best we're seeing rough that's a few glimpses we're seeing flashes of what we saw last year but you'd still say this version of Kemba even if it's uh taking in the whole you know the whole package is a slightly diminished version of last year's Kemba but that doesn't matter if he was 90 percent 95 percent everybody walks away with a huge smile on their face my Kemba concerns from the beginning of the year is this is three more years left on a contract for a guy who's been shut down a couple of times. My worry is he doesn't make it either through this year or through next year or to the point where all of a sudden you've got this massive liability in the latter years of the deal. So if you can find a way to deal him for anything close, I would have pulled that trigger. That's always been my Kemba take. I, have no, I never didn't expect him coming back and – looking pretty good for teams are playing or playing in stretches last year. He looked pretty, he looked good last year. Then he got shut down. Then he came back in the bubble. He looked pretty good. And then he limped to the finish. That's the worry. You just don't want to see one of these days. Oh, you know what? He's going to sit out three games, four games. That's when you start to get worried at this point. They're fine. It's to plan. They're managing him. He's missing back backs on the days that he gets a little bit of rest. He's come back and he's looked fresher. So right now the management works. If it's sustainable over the course of the season, we all win. Great victory for everybody. So far, I think it Joe feels Sway's like it's Damn, Joe's you guys are so fired up. Great. You were so fired up, John. You would think that Kemba just played an awful, awful match. Where's your positivity? <laughs> I said, where's your you, positivity? Like, I, Let me know. If I you mean, it's just him. great play right now. Over his last ten he games, he looks we're great. Talking- we're talking about like 45% from three, you know, mid 40s from the field. Who cares? We, we know he's had struggles inside, but you, you see how that goes over a longer stretch because honestly, the line just keeps. What direction am I going here? Up, 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 up. Every single game, it's a little bit better. And it's progress. And it's, it's, I don't think, I think we all agreed coming into the season, John, that we were never going to see all star Kemba again. That first month and a half or so that he was here, when he was the face of the team, on the ball all the time, getting all the shots, that's gone not only because of his own health and, you know, slight decline, but because of the role Tatum and Brown are playing. It's got to be more I shared. Understand. It's got to be more collective. So this Look, is like the high, high end. We're no, talking John, like you don't 90% get it. That's right fine, now. But again, we have to look at the whole picture. Uh, on the Look, in the same way we weren't going to judge uh, that poorly when he looked like he was moving well and shots weren't just way. What's going on, man? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Start yeah, trying, to get a, trying to get a better shot. <laughs> All right, hey, I'm just, okay, just no, for real. Uh, He's trying to get look, light in the shot this time. <laughs> exactly. The same way I like what Joe Sway's doing. The same way we weren't going to freak out on nights he moved well and wasn't hitting shots, okay? It, it, uh, are we going to forget every which single thing did. that you guys said as well along the way, which is a, well, he's he holds the ball a little bit too long. He's got to play off ball a little more. He's a little too ball dominant. You need the ball in the Jays' hands. He's a defensive liability. So like, that's the this question. is what yeah. you guys are saying about No, that's him. a different so question. You have to still... You take the whole package into consideration, and then you have a guy who coming into this week had a negative net rating overall in terms of his play. So, again, you this is the Kemba you need to see because the issue is if he's not scoring, he has negative value. When he's scoring like this, absolutely, it's huge, especially for a team that doesn't have guys who can create their own offense, and it's huge. And I think one thing we notice here is I think Brad's got to really try hard to make sure that two of three of those guys are on the court um, as much as possible uh, and, and stress that fact because I think the 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 offenses that only have one of the big three at a time are, is where they really start to stagnate. So, But when Kemba's not going, you're screwed. Now we haven't gotten to Tatum, which we will eventually, but you absolutely have to have Kemba being an offensive force to have any chance of this team being successful. So absolutely you take this. Joe Sway, you haven't had a chance to weigh in on anything. I mean, I understand your concern, John, but I think that this team this team is in a position where they don't have to rely on Kemba to, to close out the game. I think if that was the case, I think if, if if they had to rely on Kemba to be fourth quarter Kemba to win games, then yeah, that would be a humongous problem. But um does this team win tonight without Kemba doing this? No. So you know your point is valid because they needed that tonight. 
it made all the difference, his scoring in particular. But I think what's most important for Kemba is to obviously finish in the paint, you know, get to the free throw line. I think when he's doing that more often, I'm less concerned. 12 three-pointers is a bit concerning. I'm with you, John. It's a lot of threes. That's when I start to worry that Kemba uh, isn't isn't confident enough to finish in the paint when he starts uh, relying on three-point shooting. But at least this time around, he was doing other things. Six assists, you know, six rebounds, like filling the stat sheet. Defensively, John, I know you probably overlooked this on a high, high note, but uh, he got a defensive stop on Paul George. That three-pointer, that counts, John. That's a, that's a stop. You know? I like his defense. I do. So yeah. he's he's finding ways to be effective in other in other facets of the game. And the passing. You know, let's talk about the yeah. passing. What happened? There was, what happened there was, to Jalen tonight? We'll get to that in a minute. But the resurgence don't, of the ball movement deflect. is due to Walker. He <laughs> no, he no, largely no, no. has been I'm on the ball popping in the last few minutes. When Kemba ramped it up, I we 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 lost we lost Jalen at some point. It's yeah, that that's whole true, but that's a different that's again. a different conversation though. That would be an issue yeah. even if Kemba was a hundred percent. No, yeah. I see what you're picking at. You're trying to what are you saying did he get in the way a bit? Because at halftime, when I did my report, I'm saying I don't know. Jalen's I, going I off. About Jaylen. But, uh, yeah, because well, you did, but I, I knew Kemba was we all did, right? You can see in that second quarter. In my report, I'm like, Yeah, Jalen's the is the talk of the first half, but Kemba's warming up and look out. So yeah. I it think started, when, Kemba, yeah. when Kemba started heating up, Jalen sort of stepped back a bit. Started six of yeah. six for Brown, and then he finished two of eight. Yeah, two of eight. Yeah. So my yeah. my thing my my but again thing I, I, I I'm thinking about Kemba's performance tonight. Kemba's performance tonight is exactly what you needed. You don't win this game without him tonight. There's no question. But go ahead, Jimmy. Yeah, no, I, I think we're we've we're kind of jumping around a little bit. Like John, you're kind of focusing on like the overall Kemba experience, like not you're you're thinking so far, you're thinking like about year four right now, where it's like, well, why don't we just focus on this game and the last few games and you know, he's gonna play Thursday, they have an all star break coming up, and like so far he looks healthy, and that's why I'm off the hook on my apology already, because I think he's already proven at least what my initial concerns were going to be that we were going to get a guy that was just going to be, you know, 60% and playing 20 minutes or, yeah, you know, I, less. And and so like for that, at least we're not getting that. So I'm way less concerned about the future than I am like the present. And, and honestly, like with Kemba Walker, the way he's playing right now, I mean, this team would be so much worse off if, if he needs to be the alpha on this team. And maybe, maybe we all jumped ahead and thought that this was Jason Tatum's team and Jalen Brown's team a little too soon. I mean, these guys are still pretty young. Um, you know, they do show up in spurts, but they're not consistent either. Everyone wants to criticize um, J um, Kemba Walker's inconsistency. Inconsistency. Who's been more consistent than Jason Tatum recently? Um, you know what I mean? So yeah, and I will Kemba, get into Tatum. We will, but I just want to. I just want to finish by saying, you know, I'm. I'm. You know, it's a good thing. That it's all. It's an obvious good thing that Kemba Walker is stringing together these performances. And I know he's not playing the second night of back to backs, and I'm okay with that until he's, you know, it's probably a good thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with it it's based on the way these, these, these guys, based honestly, based on the way some of these guys look like Tatum and Brown, they should probably be sitting out some more games than, than what they've been sitting out because they look beat up out there half the time. So I'm okay with the minutes management. And I just think, listen, yeah. we said it before the, before the season. If Kemba Walker can't come back and be close to Kemba Walker, this team has no chance. And we saw that a number of times this season when he wasn't playing or when he wasn't himself. So the fact that he's very close um, now, it's now it goes, the ball goes back to Jason Tatum and, and Jalen Brown. Where are these guys? You know, because now it seems like, like you said, John, can they all coexist? Well, and again, I, I just want to close the loop on the Kevin because it's an, it's an annoying conversation. Every single time he has a good game, it's see John. He's had 10 I'm not good anti games in a row. <laughs> I'm saying, nor do I think he's capable of good games, nor is my takeaway from this game wait till year four of the contract. I don't give a crap about that. I'm just simply saying, <laughs> you when it's just said that, hey, John, look, look, look. <laughs> I'm, trade him now, I'm literally worry. saying, all I said yeah. prior yeah, to the season that, was, you said that in the group chat. You said in the group chat. Yeah. All <laughs> I said prior chat. to the season was, I'm worried about this guy. I think his knee is messed up. I think Danny's trying to dish him. I would absolutely bail here. That's it. I think that's, that's that. 
That's it. I said from day one that was the wrong move, and I still think it is. Even if you were able to get like fair value, and from we had him the right report now, about you... GMs laughing at Ainge over it, you know. So yeah. come on, Wh- whatever I, you think fair value I don't is have right that now. Conversation every time Kemba plays well, Kemba played great. Celtics need Kemba to play great. This was a great game. If you had this Kemba Walker all year long, you're thrilled. Okay? Well, let me ask thrilled. you again. Yeah. Let me ask you again, guys. If you could trade him for fair value right now, whatever you think that is, would you do it? I don't know. That's that risky. I don't like that question because I don't know who the play. It's gonna. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever you think. Is. Whatever you think the right return is. For Kemba. Yeah. That's a hard. How do you gauge that well, for this team? Though? I'll throw out. I'll throw out the the one I brought up yesterday. If if you can, if if apparently Oladipo's, never gonna get it. Oladipo's never going to resign in Houston. He's going to be a free agent at the end of the year. If the Celtics are dead set of getting away from Kemba Walker's contract, if they feel the same way John feels, where like we don't trust this guy's knee in year three, year four, then you would look to get rid of that contract. If you can bring somebody in like Oladipo, and if you have to flip, if you have to trade them something else to entice them to take Kemba Walker, whether some sort of pick package, would you? But make you're that much worse trade? then, aren't you? Like you're ten times worse. No, you're you're not. But that's just, you're not ten. Kemba Walker's ten times. Better than Victor Oladipo? What's Oladipo shooting this year? Like 30s? 39%. It's been really bad. Yeah. yeah. also shooting 39%. Yeah, like, no, he's not. Get away from the, get yeah, away from the like, stats for one second. I mean, Oladipo, it doesn't matter the stats, but yes, Kemba a coming into the game. Oladipo. Oh, the reason, the reason I – the, the reason I say is it's hard to gauge that is because uh, with this team, I mean, ideally, this is – if, if this is going to be the regular Kemba, Kemba or at least – coming into the game. Yeah, I mean – Listen, I, I just think you, it's hard to replace someone like Kemba and plug in a, a similar value for this team because the respect, the you know, I, I think all of that plays a part in compare, you know, in, in his relationship with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. So I, I don't know, man. I don't know if that's the solution. If you want to look long term, sure, you know, obviously that's the move because we don't know when this knee's going to give out. But on the other side of things, short term, if this team wants to be successful this year, I don't know if. If, if, if bringing in another point guard right now is the best thing for this team in this situation. Well, that's Agreed. the thing. I'm just, I'm just talking, listen, and that's what you have to decide. Are you, are you, are you designing your team for just this year or for the yeah. future? So that's yeah. part of the decision making. And I'm not advocating for the trade. I'm just throwing out a player instead of just, no, saying, it's, it's a realistic fair thing. value. Yeah. yeah it's I a think, realistic I think it's, trade. It's too player. tempting not to, you know, keep, keep it, keep it going with Kemba, with Kemba at the point, the way he's playing right now. Yeah, I still think he's a great fit for this team. I think he allows you to get, you know, third star production while also, uh, you know, maintaining Tatum at the least. We do have to have that Brown conversation because it does feel like they kind of run into each other at certain points. So that would weird. be an argument against him at one point. I'm, but uh, and again, I'm not arguing against him. In a vacuum, him. I like all three you gotta of them. you got to figure it out. These guys have to figure yeah. it out. Yeah. <laughs> this, this dude goes, don't talk about trades. We just won. <laughs> <laughs> no, but again, I, I watch this team, guys, and this is what drives me crazy every night when you're like, ah, just see how it goes. You're going in the crunch time, and I know Marcus Smart's out with semi Ojale on the court. Like, really? I love Ojale. I think he's had a fantastic week, but your fifth man in crunch time cannot be semi Ojale. There's just no way around that. Like, like, I defend him as hard as anyone. I had to spend the whole day in my mentions talking about Ojale. It's like a year from now, I'm going to look you back on this day and be like, that's train. what. Yeah. You know, you know who's- Bobby, but Bobby, you know, you know who's a good upgrade for Ojale, at least for this season, for short term, Thaddeus Young. But that's just me. I don't know. Sure. I don't want to get Ooh. started. I no, I just want to throw that out there. But yeah, we'll talk about Tatum at this point. Well, right? last week it was Neesmith, well, that's... and we saw what happened. You saw what Luca did to him. But what's Thaddeus Young make? I think uh, like twelve for one. To, yeah, to something me, like that. to me, the, the Thaddeus Young is if you can unload Tristan and a pick. That, there Done. you could do it. You still do it. preserve the yeah. you, you still PE. You know what I mean? Like I'd be willing to do that and still hold on to the TPE as something that you could roll in. A lateral move. Well, that's what huh? that's what makes this. But that, that's what makes it so interesting. Thaddeus Young is better for you, this you team can, than, than Tristan. You can, but yeah, you can trade for Thaddeus Young without using the TPE. I mean, yeah, exactly. We're talking about we're talking about the Chicago Bulls here. I mean, they're not. They're, they're nowhere near the playoffs, you know. And you might be yeah. right, John, but again, it, even if it moves the needle like a centimeter forward, it's not going to be that drastic. But that's what I would impact. do it because you're still preserving the TPE, which is an asset. 
So he is exactly. thirteen. He's thirteen million this year, which yeah would be Thompson matched next year. It looks does, like he's he got a non a skill set. Yeah, yeah. From that he's position. got a non guaranteed fourteen next year, so you could also keep him for next year. It looks like if you wanted to. Yeah, you could lock him in. Yeah.